guys, it's Brent from My Backyard again, and today, at the request of my wife, Danette, I'm going to smoke up some salmon. So I have two kinds of salmon here. I have some coho and some king salmon, and you can tell which is which. The coho has that richer, dark orange, reddish color, and the, the king or the chinook salmon is generally a lighter shade of orange. While I'm at it, I, I still have a bunch of halibut in the uh, freezer from last spring and many of you that follow the channel know we do a lot of uh, bottom fish fishing. So I'm going to go ahead and smoke up some halibut and it's going to be done in the exact same way as I do the salmon. It's a fairly easy process. Uh, it's mainly kosher salt and brown sugar. I'm going to go ahead and press in some pepper, some coarse uh, cracked pepper into the meat to try to get a little pepper flavor to go into the meat during the brining process. So I also have a tin. You never want to use your own metal uh, pans or dishes to brine fish in because it would be hard to get rid of this, the smell afterwards. So this is a throwaway pan. I also have a Ziploc for each kind of fish. Uh, I'm going to put both types of salmon in one bag and the halibut in another. I'll put them in this tin and then we'll put them in the fridge to brine overnight. Uh, so first step here is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to sprinkle some cracked pepper on these fillets and I'm going to kind of press it into the meat before I put in my uh, the salt and sugar brine mixture. So I'm just kind of randomly sprinkling the cracked pepper over the fillets, pushing it in so that hopefully it stays mostly in place during the brining process. Okay. Now I'm going to now I'm going to mix up my uh, rock salt to brown sugar mixture. I prefer a 5 to 1. Uh, it's really up to your taste. I know uh, I've seen a lot of people doing 3 to 1 sugar to salt. I do 5 to 1 sugar to salt. I think the 5 to 1 gives us gives me the right flavor I'm looking for. I think if you use more or less sugar it will affect the saltiness and the sweetness of the uh, fish when it's all said and done. So I'm going to do five of these scoops and I have a three quarter cup scoop. So the amount isn't necessary as much as the proportion. So there's one, two, three, four, And honestly, I've done this with uh, rock salt before and it works fine. Five. So we're probably a little shy of five. Now we'll go ahead and get our coarse kosher salt. Of course, the kosher has the religious implication, but for our purposes, it's a larger surface area salt. It tends to stick better to the meat. So we pretty much use coarse kosher salt in everything that we do here at my backyard. So I've got my ingredients mixed, or in the mixing bowl rather. Now I'll mix them up, try to get the salt and sugar evenly dispersed. That looks pretty good. Gonna be a little messy, that's all right. I got a waterproof countertop here in the man cave. Someday I'll have to give you guys a tour of the cave. So I'm gonna sprinkle in some as a foundation. I'll do this halibut first. So if there is skin on it, and sometimes halibut there is, sometimes there isn't, uh, depending on how we process it at the beach. Skin side down. Then we take some more of our mixture and we put it over the top. If you find that you made too much brine, 
feel free to uh, put the remainder in a Ziploc and save it for the next time you're smoking fish. Won't hurt it at all. All right, so we got that one done. Slide that out of the way. And we'll do the same thing for the salmon. Sorry if I seem a little distracted. My horrible redskins are losing to the Giants in D.C. towards the end of the first half, 21 to 14. Not been a good uh, quarter century for us Redskin fans. So in we go with the foundational layer again. Gonna need a little more this time. Cause I got a little more fish. Spread that out evenly. In go the fillets. In all honesty, when you smoke fish, I don't really think there's much difference between king and sh and silver or chinook and coho. Um, I'm sure some of the aficionados would t be able to tell the difference. I've never thought, well, that would have been better if it were a different kind of fish. I just I just like smoked salmon in general, so no need to overthink it. In with our last two. Now I'll just try to get the remainder of this brine and cover those fillets. You don't have to cover them perfectly because you'll see that the uh, salt in the mixture immediately starts drawing on the fish, drawing the moisture out of the fish fillets. So it will immerse in its own fluid and then the brine will kind of distribute as a liquid. So even though we're dry brining them when we pull it out, it will be wet. Alright, I cleaned up a little bit. I got these uh, in the bags. I have them uh, brining right now. If you look closely, you can see uh, the really dark colored sugar here is the moisture coming out of the fish. And it's only been maybe five minutes that these things have been in this mixture. So the salt is starting to draw out that moisture. So we're going to throw it in the fridge. We'll take them out, dry them, and uh, dry them for a few hours and we'll smoke them up. And we want to smoke them to 140 internal, 140, 145. Really that depends on your taste because the, the fillets come in different thicknesses within the fillet itself. So saying one piece is at 145, you know another piece is gonna be hotter or cooler depending on how thick it is. So we'll get the, the refrigeration leg going to this trip and then we'll check back in with you later. Phase two of smoking salmon is taking it out of the brine, rinsing it and allowing it to dry before we put it in the smoker. We want it to dry and get real tacky to the touch so that uh, it, it will adhere to the smoke better and will get a better smoke penetration and smoke flavor. And you can see here we talked a little bit about in the beginning how the uh, moisture is pulled from the fish. This was a dry brine of just salt and sugar and we've had the moisture pulled from the fish just with that salt. So let's rinse these off. I have a couple smoker racks and some paper towels here. You can really feel the fish is very firm. So we'll, uh, I have a couple smoker racks upside down. They work great for drying racks. Okay, that's the halibut. Now let's see how our salmon came out. This was uh, almost 24 hours in the refrigerator and you can see all the moisture that's been drawn from this fish. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So now we've got these dried with uh, some paper towels. We'll let them sit here and air dry for a couple hours and then we'll throw them in the smoker. Let's prep the smoker. I'm going to 
gonna go grab the fish, bring them out here in about a half hour. All right, the smoker has been running now for about 20, 30 minutes. We're up to 150 degrees. You can see we got some good smoke going. I got the salmon on one tray. I got the halibut on another. And here in about a half hour, I'm gonna start doing temperature checks with my instant thermometer. The fish has been on the smoker for about a half an hour. I don't expect it to be at 140 yet, but I'm going to go ahead and take a look to see what kind of a pace that the fish is heating up at. And you'll find once you start smoking fish with heat, and that, this thing will get up to about 200, like I said. Once it start, once the fish starts gaining temperature, it gains it faster and faster as it approaches 140. So you really got to keep an eye on. So let's see where we're sitting here. Beautiful smoke in the smoker. Yeah, it's still pretty raw. We're looking at uh, mid 80s on that piece, 90 there. So the salmon, that piece is at 100. Halibut is at, at about 100. So we're on a good pace between 80 to 100 for all of it. Uh, so we'll come back out here in about 20 minutes. We may end up being done by then, and if not, we'll do it again. Okay, it's been a little over an hour on the salmon. The halibut's already out. This should be enough time for the salmon to also be done. So let's take a look. You see the fish oils are boiling out wherever I put the temperature probe in. 140. One fifty three. So we're good to go. All right, and here we are with the uh, salmon. We'll push it up against. Well, before I do that, I'm going to pat some of this oil off of it. And then we'll take another rack, put it over the top like this, and then we're going to let it air dry for a little while. And that is some smoked salmon and halibut. I'm going to let it cool a little bit and then we'll have a quick taste test before we put it in the refrigerator. And now it's time for the taste test of these lovely treats. So I'll take a little piece of halibut off the tail. Salty, good texture. Halibut is a lot like salmon in that the meat is very dense and rich. And I think it smokes up real nice. Try a piece of salmon. Mm. Mm. Very good. Yep. So, I use a 5 to 1 brown sugar to rock salt mix. Put it in that a dry brine overnight. Take it out the next morning. Uh, I would say at least probably 8 to 10 hours if you wanted to try to do it in one day. Um, take it out, pat it dry, then air dry it for at least an hour or so. It'll build that tacky pellicle and that'll help it bring in the smoke. Um, I used maple chips in this. I don't really think uh, the kind of smoke matters honestly. And uh, I smoked it until it was 140 internal and that was in the thicker spots and I used the thermopen so that I got an accurate reading. Opened the door probably a few more times than I should, checking the temperature, but 
I've overcooked it before and uh, I let it cool here for about an hour. Now I'm going to vacuum seal them, put them in the fridge for a while and we'll be breaking them out for holiday parties. So from everyone here at my backyard, I hope you guys have a, a great Christmas, some great holidays and uh, comment below what you want uh, to see us uh, video next. So come up with some ideas for some tasty treats. Thanks, everybody.